Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome on a chilly Sunday morning. Isn't it great with the sun out? Yes. It's so cold. <laughs> but it's pleasant in here. Keep your coats on. We have something, unless you want to take the whole group and go downstairs and worship where it's nice and warm, we could do that. But the uh, upstairs furnace is not functioning properly. It's kicking out some heat, but not very much. So, no promises. If I get cold, we'll leave early. <laughs> promise. Promise. That's, that's probably not true. <laughs> How'd you just do it, Tim? <laughs> oh, you were tur turning it down where you were. <laughs> that we were going to have uh, our congregational meeting today because of some of the scheduling and my inability to function very well, which is not normal, which is normal. <laughs> uh, the congregational meeting will be the last Sunday of January. Board meeting will be on Monday the 24th, and uh, then the following week uh, will be the congregational meeting here. And we encourage you to invite everybody to come. It's not a members only, it's a congregation. Those who attend, you're part of our family, and you uh, will get all the information, and we'll have literature and so on for you as well. Uh, then we'll come right back uh, two weeks later with the board meetings for February on the 7th, and our special friends and family day on the 13th of February. Now, that's also Valentine's weekend. So we would like you to invite all of your family, extended and immediate family, to come and be in church. And uh, just, we would like to make that a special day. It will be a special day with uh, service, different uh, venues and different music, not different, just, we, we really want to uh, fill the seats. Make sense? Yes. We need you to help. So those are the announcements. Uh, we still are running the Baked Goods uh, fundraiser for Kids to Camp. And Camp Eowakaya is running full bore, full weeks of camp this year. And uh, our children will have a chance to go back to camp at Stony Lake at Camp Eowakaya. Okay. Thanks for coming. A uh, special welcome to Anna and Dana. Uh, welcome. They've been here before. Anna has been here before, but not Dana, right? Dana and has been here before, but not Anna. Just live down the street here. Thank you so much for being here today. Walk across the aisle, greet one another, and uh, then we'll begin our worship service. Okay. Oh, hi. I'm here. I just got my
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let's start out with a dumb one, okay? <clears throat> a passenger train is creeping along painfully slow. And finally, it creeps to a complete halt. A passenger sees a conductor walking by outside and yells out the window, What's going on? Ah, there's a cow on the track, replies the conductor. Ten minutes later, the train removed, resumes its very arduously slow pace. And within five minutes, however, it stops again. The woman sees the same conductor walking by again, so she leans out the window and says, What happened? Did we catch the cow? <laughs> This is for you. A man giving a long-winded speech finally says, I'm sorry I talked so long. I left my watch at home and a voice from the crowd says, there's a calendar right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A cowboy in, who had just moved to Wyoming from Texas walks into a bar and orders three mugs of beer. He sits in the back of the room drinking a sip out of each one in turn. When he finishes them, he comes back to the bar and orders three more. The bartender approaches the, and tells the cowboy, you know, a mug goes flat after one draw. Uh, you know, it, it would taste better if you bought one at a time. The cowboy replies, well, you see, I have two brothers. One is in Arizona and the other is in Colorado. And when we all left home in Texas, we promised that we would drink this way to remember the days when we drank together. So I'm drinking one bigger beer for each of my brothers and one for myself. The bartender admits that this is a nice custom and leaves it there. The cowboy becomes a regular at the bar and always drinks the same way. He orders three mugs and drinks them in turn. One day he comes in and only orders two mugs. All the regulars take notice and fall silent. When he comes back to the bar for the second round, the bartender says, I don't want to intrude on your grief, but I wanted to offer my condolences on your loss. The cowboy looks quite puzzled for a moment. The light dawns in his eyes and he laughs. Oh, no, everybody's fine, he explains. It's just that my wife and I joined a Baptist church and I had to quit drinking, but it hasn't affected my brothers at all. <laughs> well, that's a good one, man. I like that one. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. So on this cold day, we get a chance to come in here and chuckle and smile and see, you know, this, this great family that God assembled for you. And it, it's, it's not for him, and it's, it's not for the other people here. It's God wanted you here, and that's why you're here. And we love you, whether you've been here today or you've been here for how long? 30, 30 years? Of, forever? It doesn't matter. We care about you. You are loved, and we welcome you. Uh, a lot of things happened last Sunday, uh, and I'm going to share something with you. We had just found out that one of my boys is going to be a dad again. So the comment was made that we'll have to find another stocking for the wall. It wasn't an hour later that Lisa got a phone call from someone at work. And I don't know if any of you have ever been to her office or know this person, uh, but one of the doctors in their office, a 36-year-old woman, uh, I think she's 36, 39, okay, you guys know. Uh, she was killed in a car accident Sunday morning. She had her eight-year-old with her, and he's in pretty bad shape. So we went from one end of the spectrum of elation of a new life coming into this world and immediately to the other end, like within an hour. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't know this woman very well. I've met her twice, I think, it, and it was brief. But I know that... The woman sitting back there interacts with her every single day. And I hurt because she hurt. And I can hurt because I know that somebody's life just changed dramatically in a blink of an eye. And that could be any of us. Any of us. You're not guaranteed to get to take a nap today. You're not guaranteed to eat lunch. So I encourage all of you, when we have a chance to do the meet and greet, and you can love on someone, do it. You may never see them again. And it doesn't matter who it is. But God is good because we are here. That being said, let's stand and let's sing. Eye of the storm.
We do have a lot to pray for, people to pray for in the back of your bulletin, or yes, uh, as a prayer guide for the week. And uh, remember to pray for this family. On top of Lisa's experience on Sunday, we have, is it Luke, I assume, that's having an... Uh, no, that would be Josh. Josh? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that surprises me. Okay. Yeah. It surprised me too. I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, bet it did. Uh, anyway, congratulations. And then Lisa gets that word, and then I stopped over shortly thereafter and said I was going to a funeral for a young woman, 65, who uh, Gay Rollins had passed away, who was our first worship leader when we came to Muskegon down at Church of the Open Door. And it was uh, expected, not expected. So sorry to see one. And then in the last seven days, I've participated in four funerals. And uh, it's getting old, folks. It's getting old. So will they. <laughs> no, they won't be. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we praise God for his comfort in times of stress and crisis. And our hearts and our prayers go out to the families, of course, who have been struggling with, with loss. Uh, Missy's back after a couple of weeks. Good to have you back. Sorry it's so cold. We figured you'd bring the heat. <laughs> but uh, glad to have her back. And there are others of our number who are sick today. Uh, and not necessarily COVID but just sick. People get sick. And uh, so let's pray for those. Are there any requests that I do not know? Sandy? Um, yesterday our friend Rod was helping us work at Dad's house cleaning it out. And he blacked out as he was coming up the stairs and fell straight back. Oh! They believe that he fractured his back and is potentially facing a back surgery. So if we could keep Ron in our prayers, that would be great. Um, he's been trying to get into his doctor to figure out why he keeps blocking up because this is not the first time that it's happened, unbeknownst to us. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of medical help that he needs at this time. Okay, we'll pray for Ron. And then also, um, Jerry, our Andy's dad, is um, facing surgery again on um, January 25th for a healthy infection that has been plaguing his body for the last year. Never quits, does it? Sandy first. Well, I kind of have two phrases. I'm another great grandma. Okay. <laughs> I'm also going to be another great great grandma. <laughs> <laughs> also, my car is working. <laughs> Tell you how bad. Joyce. <laughs>
okay, and for Wayne today with yes, Mike. Right. The only bad thing is we have to go to the laundromat. <laughs> we had a Bible study at Pine Grove on Tuesday, and all of a sudden, just, just a minute, Anna, I'll get to you. Um, it was an experience last Tuesday. We walked in, I walked in, and they locked the doors. Uh, main water line had a fire in the laundry room. And uh, you know, they were in total lockdown. Water were running. The sprinkler kicked on, and, and water's running down. And, uh, second floor to the first floor. Second, second floor first, and, and on down. It was pretty exciting. Like a waterfall. Kind of pretty. If you looked down the hallway, you could see it falling down. <laughs> it, it's fixed, I guess. Oh no, not totally. No. Oh no, they still got fans going. They were there checking the moisture. I do think that there is mold right there in that one area where we sat because the wallpaper is coming down and it's wet. <laughs> Which we've had leaks on that area before. Okay. That was exciting. That'd be a little while before it leaks cleared up. They're not locked down anymore. Do the elevators work? Oh, yes, they were. At 8 o'clock about that night. Anna. No, you... it's okay. Oh, well, we'll pray for you. <laughs> well, let's pray. Father God, what a privilege it is to come into your presence. You've heard us open our hearts, our hearts and the, the burdens that we share, the loss of, of life, loved ones. Father, for those of us grieving and the families that are grieving after the loss of those we loved, depended upon throughout our lives. We would lift those families up. Father, for those who are struggling with health, COVID, and other sicknesses, those that have been injured or hurt, Lord, there are so many to me. We just empty our hearts on their behalf to you. We ask for your presence this morning in this group, that we would feel your power, and that as we leave today, we will say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord with our family. We pray that your word would be powerful, your message would speak, boys and girls would learn of you, and as adults we would mature in our faith. We thank you for our nation and the freedom we have to come together and share prayer requests and praises, to worship together openly. We thank you for those freedoms and ask your blessing on this great land. Guide and direct in all we say and do today that it would be pleasing to you in Jesus' name. is from Proverbs chapter 29 verses 16 through 20. When the wicked thrive, so does sin, but the righteous will see their downfall. Discipline your children and they will give you peace. They will bring you the light you desire. When there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Servants cannot be corrected by mere words. Though they understand, they will not respond. Do you see someone who speaks in haste? There is more hope for a fool than for them.
Our text is an important text this morning, and uh, we're going to be there shortly and then come back to it. But it, the, the verse that is the key is verse 18, where there is no revelation, the, the New Living Bible, where there is no vision, the King James Version, which I prefer, prefer, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Revelation and or vision, which is the key word today. Vision. And this is centered in this chapter, chapter 29, just about in this little past center. But the whole key is discipline. The whole key is discipline. In front of it, he said, discipline, in verse 17, discipline your son, and he will give you peace, and will bring delight to your soul. In verse 19, it says, a servant cannot be corrected by mere words, though he understands he will not respond. And he's talking about discipline. But the key is vision. Vision in, in, in the Bible, uh, I, I've, I've never done this, but uh, we're, we're going to make a distinction today between two words that are vitally important in our Christian experience. One of the things we have to understand, our Christian experience is going to be dictated by the vision. Way back in the book of 1 Samuel, there's a wonderful story, and you've heard the story, about God calling Samuel. His mother in the first chapter came to, to uh, Eli, the prophet, and uh, wanted to have a baby. She was barren. Her husband's other wives had children, and she didn't. And she was burdened. And she came and said, God, give me a son, and I'll give him back to you. And uh, that's good, I think, and you know the story. She finally bore a son. And she came back to Eli after she had weaned him, and we don't know what age this is. Probably he was somewhere between 9 and 12. Now, in our, our, in our vernacular today, weaning, we think, oh my Lord, she nursed her son until he was 12 or something. Uh, uh, that seems a little strange. But it really is, it means nurture. When she had nurtured her son, taught her son, had him memorize scripture and knew the, the vision, if you will, the word, and brought him back to Samuel, and, or Eli, and said, here he is, he's yours, and I have given him to you. And we get to the story in chapter 3. Verse 1 of, of chapter 3 of 1 Samuel says, Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many revelations or vision. So anytime you hear the word vision, be careful. Because we must understand that in biblically, it refers to the word of God. It doesn't refer to dreams. Sometimes it does. It's dreams that God speaks to people, or particularly in the Older Testament, Old Testament. He would speak through those. But the issue is, is God speaking? And it makes discipline proper when we've done it right. But I want to talk today about, about vision and, and what our vision should be. But we have to separate the word mission from vision. What is our purpose, the church? What is our mission? What do you think is our mission as, as obviously I put this on wrong, or my collar is too high or something. Could be a little both. What is our mission? Well, it's easy for us to figure out. We have to go to Ephesians chapter 4, back in in. Uh, when Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus. And he tells us 
uh, he talks about gifts and God giving gifts to the church and he comes to and he says I, I gave some prophets and some evangelists and some pastor teachers and, and I give them and the reason he's talking to the local assembly he says here is to prepare God's people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up that is our mission. It's explained for us by Jesus when, and, and the author, Matthew, when he wrote the Gospel of Matthew. And most of you can quote this. If you've been in church at all, you'll find that this is a verse that at every missionary conference I've ever gone to, it was, it was put this way. Therefore, go into all nations and make disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to practice or obey everything that I have taught you. Our mission is to take the vision and teach God's church folks that's us, how to do works of service. Well, why? Well, Ephesians chapter 4 keeps going on. So that the church may grow. The mission is to teach works of service, teach doctrine, teach theology, teach practice. But the vision is the growth. The mission never changes. The vision may. Because God continues to teach us and talk to us through his word. So for that reason, we look back to 1 Samuel and he said, well, what was the problem in those days and why did Eli need to be changed? Well, because there weren't many visions. God wasn't speaking. And if we look at the vision that uh, Samuel had, when they said, Samuel, he thought it was Eli. He went running to Eli, and Eli said, he said, what do you want? And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Three times. And finally, Samuel caught on and said, oh, God is speaking. Revelation. And so he said to Samuel, the next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. And that's where we want to come to our point today with vision and or mission, is that we would be willing to say, okay, Lord, speak to us. We hear you. And we go back to Matthew, and he says, look, he says, I want you to go into all the world and make disciples, followers of me. And those followers will become, as we know, the church. And in that church, as they follow, we want them to hear the vision the vision is growth. And the pandemic has struggled. Most churches have struggled throughout the pandemic because uh, we, we, we had rather pretty good size. We were pretty close to filling this place. And, and uh, every church that has gone through the pandemic has got the same problem. So what's, what's our vision or mission? Vision or mission? Well, it's to grow. Churches grow two ways. First of all, we're doing our job with our mission, training each other how to do works of service. You think that's a, a simple little thing. I hardly ever will call myself a minister. I know that's what, oh, who's, who's the minister there? You are the ministers here. According to that passage in Ephesians, I am the pastor. And my job is to teach and live and practice what God told me to do, and that is to serve. And they are not uniquely, but you are the ministers. 
And if you're not ministering, I'm not teaching properly or practicing properly. But service takes many, many facets. It might be just uh, through, through this, this crisis uh, of pandemic, but the crisis that Lisa has faced this week with her doctor or one of her doctors. It might be just Lisa putting her arm around a co-worker and saying, it's all right. That's service. It might be us seeing a young mother struggling in the grocery store and kneeling down and saying, hey, honey, don't cry. It may be just service is a lot of things. It's, it's being willing to shovel off the, the ramp we have up front. Thank you for whoever did it last week. It was very nice. You took, you took empathy on me in my decrepit old age. Uh, service in Jesus' name is what he asked us to do. Service is building up, growing. Vision is growing each other that we might be more able to serve and more willing to serve. It's something that is caught, not taught. We have to teach, of course. When you see a need, fill it. How many times have you heard somebody at work say, that ain't my job? If it needs to be done, get her done. did somebody cut trees for that need? Get her, get her cut, get her done. Folks, we grow as we exercise our faith. That's so vital, and, and that's one way to grow the church. We make each other stronger as we serve. The other way to grow the church is to add to it. More people. Well, why is that important? If we grow the church and strengthen ourselves with uh, I, I'm sure that you can tell that uh, uh, my bicep is much bigger now because I couldn't, I had to lift this heavy cast. You know? uh, if, you, if you exercise a muscle, it will grow. If we use our gifts, we will grow. But the next step is take that growth and add so that we can do more as the body of Christ. People say, oh, you're just worried about numbers and dollars. You notice we didn't take an offering this morning, didn't even mention it until right now. It's because there's a plate there and a plate in the back. But we don't have to mention it. If God's people, if there are more God's people that are growing to serve. So we come to that, and I wanted to look at 2 Peter. And this is where the bulk of this message, we will come back to Proverbs, but 2 Peter, way back in the New Testament, it comes after the book of Hebrews, James, and then 1 and 2 Peter. Back in the day when we had Bible drills, we'd say, uh, John 3.16, and we'd all draw your sword, John 3.16, and charge. But if we wanted to confuse somebody, we would say, 2 Peter 3.2, or 3 Peter chapter 1. And everybody would look and say, oh, there isn't a third Peter. There's a third John, but not a third Peter. But there is a second John, second Peter. In verse 12, it says of this passage, second Peter chapter 1. So I'll always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth that you now have. Peter is talking that I have been telling them, I will remind you of your task. And our task as a church, our mission is to serve. That's it. Serve. That's all. It's not a bunch of rules. It's not a bunch of things we do or don't do. It is serve. 
serve graciously and kindly. And it comes as a reminder, because it comes down in verse, verse 19, and, and everybody would like, how many of you would like Jesus to just talk to you today? Okay, wouldn't, wouldn't we like just Jesus? Hey, hey, Marilyn. And of course she knows I'm talking, so I'm not listening. Um, or, hey, Kayla. Just like, Jesus, just talk to him. Tell me what to do. Why doesn't he do that? Well, he does that. In verse 19 of 2 Peter 1, he says, And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as a light shining in dark place until the day dawns. And he's saying, God has spoken, but he has written down. Let God speak to you. You will never know God until you know his word. Any more than when, when Marilyn and I first met, we would never, we were not alike at all. She was, of course, beautiful, and I'm not. I was very arrogant and cocky, and she's not. We, we have just reversed over these years, but none of us. So... something we cannot expect God to talk to us if you don't know the reason I mentioned Marilyn is we met when we were in Corlairs and we weren't allowed to sit with our dates and so we we were not dating so we got to sit together and we talked on the bus as we traveled across country we talked and I thought this this is pretty good and the more she spoke the more I spoke I, I learned to love her and the more you let Jesus speak to you, the more you know him. The more you know him, the more you love him. And the more you love him, the more you will serve him. That's the key. And so we need a revelation, but we don't need another revelation. We need this revelation. And most of us take our Bibles home, throw them on the coffee table, pick them up when we come to church on Sunday, or some even throw it in the car and pick it up when we, when we pull in the churchyard. Folks, we need to serve, we need to be disciples. But he's reminding us of these things so that you would know them and are firmly established in the Word of God. It's easy to say, well, God's in control, right? How do you know that? Well, God has always been in control. I believe firmly that, that uh, all of the signs, the book of Revelation, everybody wants to study Revelation. I took a survey at our Bible studies, or, or at my Forest Park Bible study. Uh, what do you want to study in the next quarter, 13 weeks? And there were six hands that popped up, and four of them immediately said, let's study the book of Revelation. Okay, I can do that. And I ask him why. Well, there's all kinds of signs in, in Revelation for the end times. Yes, there are. But they don't relate to us. All of the prophecies of, of, of the Word of God point to the Israelites and the Jewish people and God cleansing the earth before he becomes king. Friends, we don't look for a king. I want a Savior. And the Savior said, I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to take you home. The imminent return. Now, that's what Jesus said. He's coming back. And he said he's coming back to get his church. That's us. Folks, the point that we get from the revelation, the vision, is that Jesus' word is true. And if you don't know what he's talking about, we need to understand 
that God is all the things we say he is. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's immutable, he's un unchangeable, he's, he's omnipotent. He's all of those things, and yes, he is control. But that's like, <laughs> that's like saying to your husband, you got this, Dad. You have no idea if he's going to do it or not. But I know God's going to. Because God can't lie. And the importance of studying the Word of God. In 2 Timothy, he told this young pastor, he says, Study, be diligent to show yourself approved, certified unto God, a workman who not needs not to be ashamed, a workman, servant, serve who doesn't need to be ashamed. And that's what he tells us. It's vital to us that we would first be reminded of the truths that we know. The second thing from that passage in 2 Peter is he says in verse 13, I think it is right to refresh your memory. As long as I live in the tent of this body, we need to refresh in our mind. Read the Psalms. I read Psalms every single day. Not because I'm such a great poet, but because David, David was a man. He got mad. He got happy. One day he's up rejoicing, praising the Lord, and the next day he says, God, would you come down and beat up those people because they're being mean to me. Kind of sounds like us. We get discouraged. Refresh yourself in the things of God. Refresh in the things that you know. One of the things I ask you to refresh this morning is John 3.16. God so loved the world. Put your name in there. God so loved blank you. It's important for couples, marriages, families, moms, dad, grandpas, and grandmas to say I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus says it every day. God loves you. Refresh yourself with that. He loves you. Well, how come bad things happen? Bad things happen to bad people, and good things happen to bad people, and good things happen, you know what I'm saying, somewhere. So if I don't understand, Jesus says, I love you. Refresh yourself. Refresh yourselves with Philippians. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. If God gives you a task to serve, you can do it. He wouldn't give it to you if you couldn't do it. But it has to be in the strength of Christ. I can face this crisis. I can face this issue. I can face this problem. Why? Because I love you. And I will not allow you to be troubled above which you are able to think or, or, or think, according to 1 Corinthians. You, get, you will never be. God won't give you something you can't do in Him. Refresh yourself with those thoughts. Refresh your thoughts with Jesus is coming again. You look at the world we live in and the violence and the wickedness, don't you wish, hey, hey, Lord, come on. Really now? He's coming home. He's coming back. And he's coming back for you. He wants us to re refresh ourselves in the truths of the word, the vision. The mission we have, it's established. We are to serve. We are to practice what he preached. And that's what the Matthew 28 and 29 tell us. It says, teaching you to observe all things that I have commanded you. Obey all things. We are to obey Christ. When he talks to us. But most of us don't know what Jesus says to us. What did he teach them? Well, preachers, churches, you know, there's an easy sermon in Matthew 28. <laughs> We're to go into all the world make disciples. That's adding to the body. Numbers and strength. Okay, we like that part. And we like the part where it says, teaching us to observe all things baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All oh, preachers, we love to do that. 
That's important for us. Oh, yeah, we can do that. But practicing all things? How about the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What does that mean? I've done a lot of funerals. You know that. Everybody's had a lot of funerals this year. What does that mean? Well, you go through this. My mother passed away of cancer. She took her a long time to die. A couple of years, the last six months. I'd never experienced that before personally. I knew of people that have had that. But you know what? I can go up to a couple that's got a mom or a grandma or a grandpa in the hospital that's suffering, and she prays, oh, Lord. Grandma Louise prayed for years, Lord, just let me die. She finally did. But you know what? Today, I can go up to a family and say, I want you to know I love you, and I can't change a thing, but I know what you're going through. On the other hand, my father died of a heart attack. One heart attack, never, never had any symptoms. He had a heart attack and was gone. And most of us have lost people. For instance, while the, the traffic accident at least his doctor had, the death was sudden. I can empathize. I know the hurt, the emptiness, the life change that happens when it happens so suddenly. God allows things in our life. Listen to him so that when it comes, blessed are they that mourn, I can practice service by saying, I may not understand your situation and all that's going to follow, but I know how you feel right now. I can't change it, I can't fix it, but I can love because Jesus said, I love you. But uh, some of the others, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You want to be known as a child of God? Be a peacemaker. And it starts at home. A family that is constantly fighting and bickering and angry and, and, and shouting and screaming you got a problem. Make some peace. Well, my dad used to say, I can make peace by making a little war. You're not going to close your mouth. You're going to say dirty words, I'll wash your mouth. There was a little war. Kid disobeys. My dad, in fact, I still have Tim's paddle in here. We'd use it. We'd make a little war to make peace. My dad was a firm believer. Spank them until they cry, and you keep spanking until they quit. It sounds like he was going to kill us. He didn't want to kill us. What he wanted was to bring our will in submission to his. And that's what God wants for us, is to have our will brought into submission to his will. Be a peacemaker. Start at home between brothers and sisters, moms and dads, families and in-laws. My goodness. You see, that's what he meant. Practice what you heard me teach. Be kind one to another. These are truths from the word of God. And finally in this, he tells us down in verse 15, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. I want to read this little story here. There was a young man who attended a concert for the first time in a highfalutin in a theater. And he was up in the balcony, alcove, and he was sitting up in the balcony, and the leading lady stepped on the stage, and it was love at first sight. He was too far away to see well, but that beautiful mezzo-soprano voice filled the auditorium. And he knew he would marry her. Making his way back stage after the performance, the love-blinded young man quickly began the whirlwind courtship, and successfully he swept the soprano off her feet. It concluded only days later with a ceremony aboard a cruise ship. That night, as the honeymoon began, the couple were making preparations to retire. 
As the young man sat watching his new bride, he began to survey her countenance. He never noticed the aging lines around her eyes. He thought, it doesn't matter. Then he saw her take off the wig, <laughs> revealing very gray hair. Well, so what if she's older than I? That voice will conquer all. Momentarily, the blushing bride removed her petticoat, bringing into view her artificial leg, which she unstrapped and laid aside. And he said, I can deal with it, but that voice is so beautiful. Then the, night, the, the nightingale, the, the bride removed her false eyelashes, put her dentures in a glass by the bed, and popped out her false eye. <laughs> the young woman stood to her feet and implored, Sing, woman, for heaven's sake, sing! <laughs> it's that kind of memory that God tells us to remember from his word. I love you. Remember that. Refresh yourself in it. My word is true. I know what you want. So where does that all take us? To our vision. Thank you, Mike, for turning this light for me. <laughs> where does that all take us? Oops. What is our vision and mission? Our mission is to build the church. What is our vision? Where can you serve? Where can I serve? For in the service is the ministry. And then I, as your pastor, can teach and strengthen how to serve in what spirit and what attitude. Folks, our mission never changes. Our vision might and what do you mean? How many of us more mature folks really like organ, music, and hymns? Raise your hand. Okay. Same question. How many would prefer to have a band and set of drums and a bass and that with contemporary music? <laughs> okay, there's a few. I'm telling you something, folks. If we're going to serve and build, as we would say in the business world, put butts in the seats. If we're going to add, we've got to change. You see, our mission doesn't change, but our vision of what God wants has got to. As we learn to serve, serve to minister. And so as we approach our congregational meeting, you can tell this started out to be for our congregational meeting, this message, uh, we're going to have to learn what do we have to do to fulfill our mission with a greater vision. Each of us asks, what and how can we serve? When and where? What's our vision? What's your mission? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you that we can be refreshed in the wonderful truths of the revelation, the vision from God. Teach us to do something. In Jesus' name, I pray. Trusting Jesus, and he alone must stand as we
our word that we trust. That's all. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of your spirit, guide our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.